In this episode, we replace the 2J alternator with an LS1 alternator. Changing this alternator setup is because standard one's 90 amps. Just don't think that's going to be enough. By the time we run two or three big fuel pumps, two big electric fans, any of the ECU stuff, we want to have good amount of power to run everything it has to run, and the whole rest of the car, lights, air conditioning, anything else that's electrical is going to need to be run through the alternator, obviously. So that 90 amp unit just is going to be close we think we can buy a bigger one 120 amp but you're looking at like six seven hundred bucks which we thought was excessive what we've come up with is a standard LS1 alternator out of VT to VY Commodore it's 140 amp it's like 300 bucks delivered and it should do the job. It's just a basic alternator, has an exciter wire and a power. It's not not computer controlled, none of that. So with some small modifications, it should be a good thing. Between the two alternators, there's not much modifications required. You can see here, the power posts are in pretty much the same place. The plugs for the exciter wire and the power are pretty close. All we need is to change the, this style plug to the LS style plug, which he's got a pigtail for here ready to go. When you look at the locations of the bolt holes, they're very similar. Problem is they're about the width of the hole out. So we'll put that one away. What we've come up with is a couple of billet aluminum pieces made of aluminium. We need a spacer which goes on the bottom which is just goes against there. All it does is bring the alternator out into alignment for the serpentine belt. Then what we've got is a decent square chunk. It's going to go here. We're going to drill and tap two holes down through the top, bolt the block to the alternator about there. And then instead of using this hole, we use this hole. It bolts up to the factory bracket. We've done a prototype with an old alternator that was rooted and it all lines up, lines the belt up, gives us a good solid mount and we can run the 140 amp $300 alternator as opposed to the 120 amp six or $700 alternator. While we're going, we've made a billet idler adapter out of the standard power steering pump bracket. Took the power steering pump out, worked out our alignment. We've got a M10 bolt into this billet block, a couple of billet spacers, that all bolts in to this standard power steering bracket which then bolts to the air conditioner and the block. Standoff post made that houses the idler, gives us our alignment. We can now run the standard serpentine belt in standard routing. So it gets a good wrap on the alternator. It gets a good wrap on the main balancer. It should all work nicely. I'll show you how it bolts up. So the alternator runs on this bottom stud and the top bolt goes through this boss in the water pump. So what we've done, we've got the spacer slides on the stud, the alternator 
on the stud. Fits in there, the block goes in, and the bolt goes through and bolts it all up. Like so. Then the belt can be run. Something like that. So time to punch a few holes in. First of all, this little boss where the alternator mounts originally to the LS fouls on the water pump. So we're just gonna have to trim that back which is not a big deal, we'll tape it up and get it done. That's it. Cut that much off. Should fit. There you have it, LS1 alternator, bolted onto a 2J. Pretty simple once we got the idea sorted out and it's rock solid. Good wrap, mounts up nicely. As you can see, if it'll focus, it's right where it wants to be on the tensioner. The idler pulley, solid. All bolted back into the standard position. Should work well. Ready for some heavy breathing. 